हेलो नमस्कार आई एम योर फ्रेंड विंग कमांडर संतोष शर्मा फ्रॉम बैंगलोर टुडे आई मेट माय जेंटलमैन ही टोल्ड मी दैट ही हैज लॉट ऑफ इशूज एंड प्रॉब्लम्स इन हिज लाइफ फॉर लास्ट अबाउट सेवन एट इयर्स एंड फॉर द लास्ट फाइव इयर्स रेगुलरली ही हैज बीन रीडिंग हनुमान चालीसा यू नो अबाउट हनुमान चालीसा Almost all people in India know about Hanuman, the god who is a combination of a monkey and a human being. Now Hanuman is a representation of the survival instinct of an animal, that is monkey. The agility of a monkey, the strength, the vigor. and the exploding energy which is there in a monkey and the intelligence and wisdom of a human being whether such kind of people existed or not that is not the issue or that is not the point of discussion for today what we are discussing here is that it is a combination of energies which is for victory for energy for protection to decontaminate negative energies inside us to give us strength and intellect wisdom and courage in life hanuman represents that now there is a book called hanuman chalisa which normally people read to get rid of the negativity in their life and to derive strength and happiness in their life because it says in hanuman chalisa if you read then you will be freed from all kind of imprisonments i'm talking about the mental imprisonments and the confusion in life and also he gives bala means strength buddhi means intelligence intellect and wisdom and all kind of protections is a protective energy hanuman basically who was a disciple and bhakt of lord sri rama <coughs> Hanuman Chalisa actually is very very powerful to eradicate issues and problems in your life. Now about the gentleman who told me that for last five years he has been reading Hanuman Chalisa regularly without a day's break, and there has been no result at all. It's quite surprising. I asked him how do I read Hanuman Chalisa. He told me. that every day morning after bath he sits out for puja and he recites the hanuman chalisa now how to recite the hanuman chalisa i asked him he told that there's a book and i read from the page 1 to uh, last page and all the dohas are there the stanzas are there and recite the question is that many of us are doing like that and many of us find that the kind of results which we are supposed to get by reading this hanuman chalisa we do not get to that extent so where is the fault and what is the wrong we are doing that the hanuman chalisa is not working for us you see in our systems of prayers the beginning stanzas the opening stanzas they are like terms and conditions before you read something like you read for kali you read for durga you read for lakshmi or all kind of chalisas first it gives a definition it talks about some terms and conditions and at the end it says that by reading this or by listening to this what benefits you will be deriving Now let's understand the Hanuman Chalisa a little more detail. <clears throat> As you know, 
the Harman Chalisa starts with the Doha. What does it say? It says, Sri Guru Charana Saroja Raja Nija Manu Mukura Sudhar Baranau Raghubara Bhimala Sajasa Jo Dayak Phaljar. That's the first two lines. Let's understand this first. If you fulfill these terms and conditions, the first two lines, then we'll go further. Then only you will drive the results. That is the condition. It says that Sri Guru Charana, who is a Guru? And what is this Charana Raja? Charana means feet and Raja means dust. He is talking about the dust on the feet of a guru. That is that has to be used. To use that, we must understand who is a guru. Otherwise, how will you know about the dust on his feet? Who is a guru, by the way? Guru is not teacher. Let's understand this. Teachers, they have some fixed syllabus. They teach you in the school and the colleges for the academics. What we are talking about, a person is, is not a teacher. Guru is a person who is a spiritual master, who has attained the spiritual wisdom and knowledge, and he knows how to guide you to progress on the path of spirituality. Guru is a not paid servant of any government or any organization. Guru is independent. You cannot find your Guru. It is said that when you are ready to receive the spiritual wisdom and the knowledge, a Guru appears for you. The Guru is also in search of appropriate and deserving disciple. So you have to make yourself eligible to fall in that category so that you are chosen by a Guru. So the Guru actually chooses you. How to understand who is a Guru? The Guru will not have ego in the sense that he is a person who has surrendered his self to the divinity and he has lot of compassion for his disciple. If you accept somebody as a guru then you have to surrender to him, listen to him and follow his directions without questioning, that is with faith. When you start questioning your guru then you miss the point because that the surrendering is not happening actually. Surrendering is a mind which is without questions, a mind which is filled with faith and trust. So once you find a Guru and you understand, your heart says that he is your Guru, stop questioning because he knows what are your questions. And as the time comes, he will give you the answers which you will be able to digest. Because giving all the answers to you in the beginning and you keep on asking, because the questioning mind will keep on asking questions and questions and questions. You know your mind. You have been asking questions. You have been reading so many books and scriptures in search of answers and all that and you have reached nowhere. Because the surrendering is not happening. So the Hanuman Chalisa, the first line says, Sri Guru Charana Saroja Raja. The dust of the feet of your Guru, which is like a Saroja, means it's like a lotus. We always compare lotus with the feet of God, goddesses, and Gurus. So, Sri Guru Charana Saroja Raja. You have to take the dust from the lotus-like feet of your Guru 
And what will you do with this? Nijam Manu Mukura Sudhari. Nijam means yours, own. Mana is the mind. And Mukura means the mirror. First, clean up and rectify the mirror on which you already have dust of so many kinds of knowledge which are useless. Like in Shiva Sutra, Shiva says about how this kind of knowledge, false knowledge, which is what is false knowledge basically? The knowledge which is not experienced by you and which you have heard from somewhere or, or you have read somewhere. That is the knowledge which you have acquired, but you have not translated into reality. You have not experienced yourself. For example, you read about that soul exists. You know, the Atma is Amar, it is eternal, you know, or there is a God. But it is not an experience, by the way. You have never experienced about your soul, you have never experienced about the God. And you start believing. Because that is an easy route, you know, because you don't have to struggle, you don't have to do anything to realize this. So unless you have experienced and realized, that is not knowledge. It is false knowledge. The knowledge which you acquire by listening and learning from others and by reading various kinds of books and all that, that is the knowledge which is the false knowledge. That jnana becomes a bandhana. Shiva, explaining about yoga to Parvati, his wife, talks about it. He says, jnana bandhanam. He says, this kind of knowledge becomes an imprisonment. You get imprisoned in this kind of false knowledge and you think that you know. Actually, you do not know. That's why I said, he who knows not, knows. He who knows, he knows not. Means, who he claims, if the person claims that he knows, he does not know. And he, the person who says he does not know, he knows. You see? Because once you know and you realize and you experience about it, then you become silent. So you say you do not know. Like Buddha, when he asked whether God exists, he was silent. He never told, he never told that God does not exist. He was silent. Because who wants to get into controversy with people around and get into arguments and logic and all that? Because anything which can be proven by a logic and argument can be disproved by somebody with a higher logic and higher kind of arguments. It's a never-ending game. So jnana can become vandhana. So what should become jnana? Again, Shiva says, jnana annam. Means it should like a, become like a food. You digest Forget about it and becomes part of you. When you eat something, it gets assimilated in the blood and becomes part of you. So the jnana, which you are talking about, should have become part of you. Then only it is jnana. Otherwise, this is false knowledge. And that can be like a imprisonment, leading you nowhere actually. And you keep roaming around knowing nothing. But thinking that you know, but really, you know nothing. So this kind of false illusion about knowledge, false illusion about life, false understanding, etc., they are the dust on the mind's mirror. Why it says this? Mana Mukura means mind is a mirror. Why? Because everything is getting reflected on the mind's mirror and we are perceiving this world that way. Because the whole world is like an illusion, it's like a maya. When Buddha asked, when Buddha asked after enlightenment about this illusion and about the astitta, the nature of the cosmos, he told, everything exists and does not exist. Exists and does not exist. No? It is all pulsating. Frequencies. Zero, a peak. 
zero and peak. Zero, it does not exist. Peak, it exists. So anything which exists and does not exist next moment and again exists and does not exist again, is it truth? No. It is an illusion. That's why we say it is a maya. It is an illusion. So this knowledge itself, which you think that is knowledge, because it is not experienced by us, also becomes a false knowledge. This kind of jnana is not going to take anywhere. And this is like garbage and dust which has accumulated on your mind's mirror. So with the grace of the dust of the Guru, your guides, your spiritual master, you clean up your mind's mirror. Nija, your own, Mana, Mukura, Sudhar. First you have to clean your mind of all the garbage and dust which you have been accumulating and storing in your mind inside, thinking that this is knowledge and this is jnana. But actuality, you know nothing because you have not experienced anything. This is like talking about love but have never loved in life, talking about swimming but never gone to the swimming pool or a river or a pond to swim. There is no experience. So knowing about swimming, or knowing about flying for that matter, you may you can buy some books relating to the flying, how to become a pilot and read the books, I read about the engine and the aircraft and the dynamics of flying. You don't make you a pilot? No. You require an instructor. In this, he is a teacher and to some extent a guru because he is teaching you something which is going to be a case of life and death, not only yours, of the passengers who are sitting with you in the airplane. So, once you have cleaned your mind of the garbages and the false knowledges with the grace of your Guru, then only you start reading the other lines. It says, Sri Guru Charana Saroja Raja Nijamana Mukra Sudhar Varana Uraghubara Bhimaraja Jo Dayak Phalchar. Now he is talking about Varano Raghubara Bhimalajas. Varano means welcoming. What you welcome, what you think about, you become like that. If you are in the company of good people, you start imbibing good quality in your life. We call it Sadhu Sangati. If you stay with good people, it rubs. You stay with bad people, you stay with people, those who drink or smoke or get into other kind of vices and indulge in crimes and all that, slowly and slowly over a period of time you will become one of them. So you should stay in the good company. When you stay with the good company then you will understand what I am talking to you. You know, because Varano means welcoming. Welcoming what? Varano Raghuvara he is talking about the Maryada Purusha Ram. He was a person who had his ethics and morality intact. He is a perfect gentleman. So, Baranau Raghuvara, Bimala Jasa. Bimala means which is not contaminated, which is pure, which is spiritual and blissful. You would invite those kind of energy like Raghuvara. It can be Krishna, it can be anybody else, it can be Jesus, it can be Muhammad, it can be Buddha, it can be Mahavir Jain, or for that matter, whoever you believe that he is an uncontaminated soul and who is spiritual. You invite those energies to your life. Spread your arms and invite those energies to your life. Baranau Raghubara Bhimala Jasa. Jasa means the fame, the aura, the power, the glory. You invite. Varanau Raghuvar Bimal Jas Jo Dayak Falchar. 
if you do that then you you will be receiving four things in life jo dayak phal charo which gives phal means fruits four types of fruits it gives you in hindu darshana we talk about four fruits that is kama artha dharma and moksha you see there are three kinds of fruits in other religions and belief system that is kama artha and dharma kama means the desire to have a good life to have the material accumulation so that you can live happily comfortably you have a good wife or husband good children because all this karma is the basis of the family without karma there cannot be marriage there cannot be families so you are helping the creation for the sustenance so karma first comes first karma arth then you require wealth relationships is the first karma union between male and female in and yang energies positive and negative energies so this is a combination for the creation that is the fundamental thing which is required in continuity of creation arth arth can be understood by money wealth meaning of life arth means meaning also okay understanding about the life clarity about life so kama arth then dharma you also get dharma dharma is not about the religion which we talk about i am not talk about hindu muslim christianity buddhist jain or sikh or something like that we are talking about the dharma means dharma word starts from a dhatu in sanskrit it's called dhru dhatu means dharana you know what you think about dharana means the way you perceive life your belief system the way you think about the universe and the whole world like in hindu philosophy we talk about vasudheva kutumbakam which is dharana vasudheva kutumbakam means the whole world is one family beyond nations beyond religions so called religions beyond colors languages one world vasudheva kutumbakam and we, we say dharatri mata means earth is a mother and we are all the children so dharma is not religion what is understood loosely by people dharma is dharana the way you perceive life because that can is the basis of all growth in spirituality like krishna says in bhagavad gita sarva dharman parityajyam mamekam sharanam braja what is saying that leave aside all the dharma now people understand and talk that he was an egoistic person like a person who doesn't believe in hindu philosophy and darshan he may say that he is talking about that you leave your religions and come to me mamekam sharanam braja only my shelter you take he says okay now basically what krishna is saying sarva dharman paritaj leave aside all your dharanas all your perceptions which you have been learning through the false knowledge we are talking about what shiva was saying to parvati shiva sutra gyana bandhanam me gyana annam and leave aside all your perceptions because you have no experience and your perceptions are based on faulty notions and understanding so krishna says sarva dharman paritaj so dharma is dharana and not the religion which you talking about so kama artha dharma and in hindu darshana we talk about moksha no other 
religious belief system talks about moksha means liberation. Moksha is liberation from these cycles of birth and death and getting a, into a zone of which is transcendent zone, transcending these cycles of life and birth. That is moksha. So it talks about how to be eligible to read Hanuman Chalisa, that is finding a proper guru and take with his grace ability to remove the garbage and dust which is which has accumulated over many years, many births over the mirror of your mind and welcoming the glory of a soul, a spiritual soul which is uncontaminated because his that energy will be imbibing when you welcome. So if you do these three things, one, having the grace of your Guru, second, ability to understand, identify and remove the dust and garbage on your mind's mirror and welcoming the glory of an uncontaminated super soul, divine, it may be Jesus, it may be Muhammad, it may be Buddha, it may be Jain, it can be anybody for that matter, you know, whose personality you have belief. So if you do these three things, four things will happen to you. Four things will happen means you will be getting four fruits. You will have success in karma, you will have a balanced, happy, blissful life, good family life with good children. And Arthur, you will have sufficient wealth and money to lead a life which is comfortable. And Dharma, you will have clarity in the perceptions about the life and life's mechanism which will help you to get rid of all the sorrows, frustration, anger, irritation, jealousy, comparisons and things which are dark forces. And finally, it will help you to get rid from the cycles of life and death. So before you read Hanuman Chalisa, you have to do all these things. Then only if you read Hanuman Chalisa, it will help you and you will reap the benefit 100%. But unless you follow the instruction in the beginning only, like if you go for examination and there are some rules in the beginning, please read carefully before you start answering. I'll give you an example, okay, examination. Like when I was in the Air Force, there was a question paper when I went for the selection to the Air Force selection board. There was a question, psychological test we call it. Now in that, the it was written there. Read carefully all the questions one by one before you start answering in yes or no. And the questions, there are many questions, there are 10 questions are there, for example. Okay, question number one, are you a male or female? Write yes or no. Are you about 20 years old? Yes or no. Like that. So, and time was given to us was one minute. So, People normally, because one minute is there, you have to read, put up, put, you know, you know, quickly you start writing. So yes, no, yes, no, yes, no, yes, no, yes, no. And the end, the tenth question says, do not write anything. Already you have written there. So it's gone. You know, then you are not selected. What does it say? What does it convey? The question paper that you are not a person who has a disciplined mind. You do not listen to your superiors. You cannot take command. You have no clarity. You are a person who is restless. So how can you become a defense officer? You understood? Similarly, unless you read the first stanzas, the first terms and conditions, of the Hanuman Chalisa, reading Hanuman Chalisa is not going to take you anywhere. I understand it that way. 
in further videos, we'll be talking about Hanuman Chalisa in greater detail. We'll be taking some important, uh, very, very important dohas and all that for discussion so that it will be helpful for you to understand Hanuman Chalisa. But before you do that and before you know more about it, I request you to clean up your mind, get rid of false knowledge, know that, realize that you do not know actually and then a, a sense of surrendering will come. Then only you will become eligible to learn and receive the grace of Hanuman. Thank you very much for watching this video and we will talk more about Hanuman Chalisa in our next series of videos. Namaskar.